takes to be great men. We can esteem it, but we can't do it. There seems to be six key areas of a man's life. Now, some of these areas in your life, you've never really spent any time addressing. And for some of you that aren't married and don't have any children, your arenas shrink. Some of us feel like we have a lot more than six. So the six arenas of the Christian man's life. The Christian man needs to tend to his relationship with God. A heaven come to earth devotional life with his God. Biblical study, prayer, givenness to the pursuit of God, to know your God. Right at the top of a man's list. Okay, let's look at the next one, his wife. He's supposed to have a fairy tale, intimate relationship with his wife. There's closeness, there's intimacy. He has a sensitivity to her needs. He can read her across the room. She needs me. His kids, he gives a world-class investment into the lives of his children, where if raising children was an Olympic event, he would win the gold medal. Every single one of us guys begins to shrink. It's like, I can't even think about it. That's such a heavy weight. I know. I'm just going to keep adding to it. Friends and family. You see, this isn't just your own you know, wife and children. This is like your extended family, your mother, father, in-laws, brothers, sisters. Then you have your whole collection of friends. This man is kind, consistent, honorable, and thoughtful in his remembrance and service unto his friends and extended family members. Business. As a man, we need to be uncompromising in our excellence and diligence in these business dealings and financial investments. There's not a spot of darkness in our life. We handle this arena of our life with absolute integrity. Ministry. Hudson Taylor-like givenness to the preaching of the gospel and the practical rescue of the lost, the dying, the orphans, and the widows around him. Every single one of these six arenas is commissioned by God that we be excellent in them. There is no excuse in the Bible that says, yeah, you can neglect your God. He'll understand because you're a busy man. There is no excuse that you should neglect your wife. There is no excuse that you should forsake your children. There's all sorts of reasons you could justify it. I mean, there's been great men that have had great ministries that have changed the world. And they lost their kids. And their wives were absolutely miserable the whole time. You know how a man is fit to lead the church of Jesus Christ? He said he's proved himself in his home. How does a man prove himself in his home? He proves himself in his prayer closet. You start with a prayer closet, and guess what? That equals a great marriage. You start with a great marriage and you prove yourself there, and guess what? You'll be successful with your family. You see, if you're great with your wife and great with your God, it's sort of hard not to be great with your kids. It's a natural byproduct. And if you're great with your God, with your wife and your kids, did you know that that should flow into the other areas of your life? Now here's what's going on inside of your minds. You see, Eric, if I'm great with my God, I'm not gonna have time to be great with my wife and my kids. It's one of the most common justifications we have in modern Christianity. So in all my efforts to figure this out, here's my conclusion. Out of those six areas, we have the ability as men to be great in 2.5 at any given time. You see, we're not built for six, but we can be good at 2.5. Now you can spread that 2.5, do a little 0.5 over here, 0.75 over here, 0.25 over here. This is how most of us live. You must face the facts that it is impossible to do it all. You esteem living right. You really would want to live right, and you would give up everything if you knew it was really possible. However, with men, it is impossible. But we have another fact. With God, nothing is impossible. This is the Word of God. And when God says it, you can be sure that He can do it. He is not capricious, which means he isn't saying, oh, you need to do that, and then he's chuckling over here going, as if they could. We can't, but he can. That's what we're missing. You see the vision, you see the standard, but you've been spending your life attempting to diminish the standard, to say, I don't want to get into that dangerous place. I don't want to see how weak I am. I am a man. I need to think of myself as strong. No, a man's strength starts by recognizing his inerrant weakness and God's strength. God has given you a clear command that is impossible. And he says, do it. And you're like, but I can't. He says, I know you can't. I can't in and through you. You have everything you need for the impossible life. But you have to take it. This works. 
God, wife, kids, friends, family, business, and ministry. 100% exertion, 100% of every minute for 100% of the rest of your life. Expect to be successful in all six. Jesus changes a man, and he makes him able to accomplish what otherwise would be impossible. That's Christianity.